Most ternary phase diagrams that I know of contain intermediate compounds along the binaries and within the ternary. The presence of those compounds can make the liquidus projection look very intimidating. The purpose of this video is to remove that intimidation and get you to where you can interpret the phase diagram in a confident and reliable fashion. Most real systems contain intermediate phases. And so now we should look at how those start to make the phase diagram look a little bit more intimidating. For each intermediate phase that's introduced, we'll introduce new primary phase fields and new ternary invariant reactions. Let's look at one or two simple examples. First, here in my ABC system, and I'm assuming no solid solubility just to make things simple, I've introduced a high melting point binary intermediate phase X, perhaps with the formula AB. And this in turn will introduce then, because it's high melting, a new binary and ternary eutectic. So here's the resultant liquidus. Here's X, and a eutectic between A and X, and a eutectic between X and B, and those meet the eutectics coming out of the AC and BC system at two ternary invariant reactions, which from the directions of the arrows we can tell are eutectics. So for a system like this, typically what we would do is first identify the primary phase fields, and they're bounded by these liquidus projections. And so we would look at the solid phase fields to the left and to the right of each liquidus valley. So for example, here in this corner, this will be primary phase field A. To the right of this, we have X. So it's a eutectic between A and X. So this must be the primary phase field of X to the right of it. For this one, X to the left, primary phase field B to the right and down in this region, primary phase field of C. Now we've done that, we can identify both the ternary invariant reactions. In this case, we know it's a eutectic, all the arrows coming down in temperature. So for this one, we have liquid in equilibrium with A plus X plus C. And for the other one on the right, it's liquid in equilibrium with X plus B plus C. In my next example, the intermediate phase X introduces a ternary peritectic and eutectic reaction. Let's see if we can identify these. So first, what is the reaction, what is the equilibrium at G? The first step is to make sure that we can correctly label all of the primary phase fields. The primary phase field for A is bounded by these liquidus valleys. For X, this must be the primary phase field of X. For B, up in this top right corner, we'll shade that. And finally, this is the primary phase field of C. Now what we have to do is look at the directions of the arrows. They're all pointing down as we come into G. So that tells us it's a ternary eutectic, and it's going to be liquid in equilibrium with those three primary phases, X, B, and C. What is the reaction at H? Well, let's look at the directions of the arrows. Two valleys coming in, and one exiting. So two in, one out. If you remember, that's our 2-2 two, two peritectic. What we have to do now is look at the primary phase field that's between the two incoming valleys, that's A. So it'll be liquid plus A in equilibrium with the two exiting primary phase fields, X plus C. And so, as I just said, this is a 2-2 paratectic, and this would be our equilibrium. What do we run out of? That depends on the overall composition that we pick. And we'll come to those examples later. Let's ramp up the complexity a little bit. 
So what I have now is an intermediate compound, X and Y, in two of the component binary systems. We'll assume that they have high melting points, that they melt congruently, and that they introduce eutectics. Well, now we've got a couple of possibilities for the solid state compatibilities in such a system. And we'll see the liquidus projections are going to be different depending on where those Alkamadi lines lie. If you think about it for a while, there's bound to be a stable line between X and Y. But now in this other area, we've got two possibilities. We could have stable XC, or we could have a stable tie line between A and Y. If the XC Alkamadi line is stable, so here in the lower left is my solid state compatibilities. Now we can sketch the resultant liquidus projection. So X is a high melting point. It has eutectics on either side of it in its binary. The same for Y. So on this BC side, a eutectic to the right of Y, a eutectic valley to the left or below Y. And when they merge into the system, I get three ternary invariant reactions. What are they? We'll come to that in a bit. Let's label the primary phase fields. Hopefully we're comfortable with this now. The A primary phase field, X, B, Y, and C. What if we have a stable Alkamadi line between A and Y. In other words, the solid state compatibilities tie lines now look like this on the right. Well, the liquidus projection must look different. So to X, eutectics still in the binary to the left and the right, and the same for Y, but now they're merging to produce ternary invariant reactions in different areas of the triangle. Let's label the primary phase fields, A, X, B, Y, and C. And we can see by comparing the left and the right, there are some subtle but yet significant differences between the two. Indeed, the not so subtle differences are that they have different ternary invariants. So let's take a look at those and see if we can correctly identify them. Let's go to the situation on the left where I had a stable XC Alkamadi line. This first ternary eutectic here is definitely a eutectic, all arrows coming in. It's liquid in equilibrium with A plus X plus C. Let's go to the one on the top right. Liquid in equilibrium with the three primary phase fields X, B and Y. And finally this one down here. This is liquid in equilibrium with X, Y, and C. But now let's go to the one on the right. First of all, we'll go to this upper right ternary invariant. All the arrows coming in to the invariant. So this looks like and is a ternary eutectic liquid in equilibrium with X plus B plus Y. Now let's take a look at this one. And let's be careful. Look at the directions of the arrows two coming in, one coming out. This is no longer a ternary eutectic, it's a peritectic. Two in, one out, that's a two-two peritectic. It's liquid plus the primary phase field between the two incoming valleys, that's X. So it's liquid plus X in equilibrium with the two exiting primary phase fields, that's A plus Y. It's a 2-2 peritectic, L plus X in equilibrium with A plus Y. And now for the last one, this is easy to identify. It's a ternary eutectic, liquid in equilibrium with A plus Y plus C. So here we see that the change in the Alkamadi lines has actually changed the types of invariant reactions that we have in the ternary. Well, we know ternary phase diagrams contain ternary compounds as well. That's also going to change our primary phase fields. 
Here's just a fairly straightforward example, hopefully, where I have the ternary compound X. Here are my Alcamadi lines. Here's my liquidus projection, my liquidus valleys. And the primary phase field of X is enclosed by these liquidus lines. And then A, B, and C, I think, are straightforward in terms of the primary phase fields. So here I have one, two, three ternary eutectics. And hopefully you can identify what they are. If you take a look at them, it's going to be L in equilibrium with A plus B plus X. This one here is liquid in equilibrium with B plus X plus C. And the last one, liquid in equilibrium with A plus X plus C. You should be seeing now that one of the key aspects of reading these phase diagrams is labeling and identifying the primary phase fields. Once that's accomplished successfully, then I would argue identification of the ternary reactions is not too hard. It's just being careful. Now, when we have peritectics in the binaries, it can get a little bit tricky correctly labeling those primary phase fields particularly when we have multiple compounds. And we'll do such an example now. The safest method is always go back to the binary before you enter the ternary to see if you've correctly identified the type of binary invariant reaction that you have. And all we have to remember there is that for a eutectic, the liquid lies between the two coexisting solids. And for a peritectic, the liquid lies outside the two solid compositions. So let's use that simple principle to have a go at the following. So now in my AB binary, I have three intermediate compounds shown. And each one has introduced an additional liquid valley. And so I have four of them. So I've got five compounds. I'm going to have five primary phase fields. And let's make sure that we can label them correctly. First number one. Now when we look at this, we see the liquid lies outside, in other words, to the right of A and A2B. And so this must be a peritectic reaction involving these two phases. The liquid's outside, so it's right plus left in equilibrium with the middle. Liquid plus A in equilibrium with A2B. So that's what that binary equilibrium is between the three phases. So the primary phase field of A is to the left of the liquid. And the primary phase field of A2B is to the right of the liquid. Let's look at the second binary shown here. So this lies between A2B and AB. So it's actually a eutectic reaction between A2B and AB. So that binary equilibrium is liquid in equilibrium with A2B plus AB. What are the primary phase fields? A2B to the left of it, which is consistent with what we had from number one, and to the right, the primary phase field is AB. Let's go to number three. So working our way to the right here, number three, that lies between AB and AB2. So it's a eutectic equilibrium in that binary, liquid and equilibrium with AB plus AB2. That would mean then the primary phase field to the left of it is AB. That's consistent with what we had before. And let's put in the new primary phase field for AB2, which must be to the right in this area, and we'll fill that in. Then finally, this liquidus reaction, labeled number four, now let's be careful, that lies outside AB2 and B. It's a peritectic. And so for this binary reaction, the equilibrium is B plus liquid in equilibrium with the phase in the middle, which is AB2. Then the primary phase field to the left is AB2, and the primary phase field to the right is B. So as long as we're careful and systematic, and by systematic, notice how we approached this, we systematically worked 
from left to right, we could have also done it going from right to left. We're systematically identifying the binary equilibria for the liquidus valleys, and then identifying the associated primary phase fields and making sure that they're consistent with each other. If you do this, I think you'll find that you can accomplish this for more complicated ternary phase diagrams. We've practiced identifying ternary invariant reactions and identifying primary phase fields. So now it's time to use the liquidus projection to look at crystallization paths. We're going to do this for a ternary where the components and any compounds are all line compounds and show no solid solubility with each other. This means that we know precisely what the composition of the coexisting solids are because they do not show any solid solution with each other. We'll go through a couple of examples to show the best procedure in reading the crystallization path. The first step is always identifying the primary phase fields and the invariant reactions if they haven't been given to you. Let's do that for the system shown. I've just added the primary phase fields here in red. A, A to B, B and C. We have two invariant reactions. And now that we have the primary phase fields, let's identify both of those. Well, G is a 2-2 peritectic. Two valleys coming in, one coming out. In between the two incoming valleys, the primary phase field is A, so it's liquid plus A, in equilibrium with the two exiting primary phase fields, A to B and C. H, all the arrows pointing down, so H is a ternary eutectic, liquid in equilibrium with A to B plus B plus C. Next, we should identify the final product to make sure we end up at the right place. And to do that, we examine the solid state stabilities. Let's add our overall composition, and I've chosen this one here labeled X. So where does X lie? As far as the solid state compatibilities are concerned, it lies in the A, A to B, C subtriangle. So that's our final product, A plus A to B plus C. And if we wanted to quantify this further, we could use the lever rule as applied to that tie triangle to precisely identify the percents of each phases that are present. We see here our overall composition lies in the primary phase field of A. So A will be the first solid phase to crystallize. So we connect the composition of that primary phase to the overall composition and extend that line because that will be the direction of the liquid as it rolls over that liquidus surface. And it'll head in the direction of the liquidus valley. And so this would be the starting composition of my liquid, and it's moving in the direction of the arrow, and it will reach the valley shown. Now let's identify what phases are present on that valley, liquid of course, plus the two primary phases either side of it. You can see at this point, the composition of the liquid lies to the right of A and A to B. So this is in fact a peritectic valley in this ternary at this point, liquid plus A in equilibrium with A to B. Now we have a three-phase equilibrium, we're going to use tie triangles to monitor the compositions and the percent of the phases present. Here I've added the first tie triangle as we just reach that liquidus valley. And we see X lies on the side here of the tie triangle, indicating that at this point, A is coexisting with liquid. But now we've just started to form A to B. Now the composition of the liquid is going to move down the valley, meaning that the overall composition 
will move inside the tie triangle, indicating that the three phases coexist. So the direction of the liquid is shown here. It moves down the valley. And let's draw a tie triangle as it just reaches this invariant reaction here that was labelled previously as G. So at this point, just as the liquid reaches this invariant reaction, we can see the overall composition is lying within the triangle, indicating all three phases are present, and that liquid remains, and that we will undergo that ternary reaction. Now we identify the ternary reaction. We did this on the previous slide, but let's just do it again here to make sure that we remember how to do it. Two arrows coming in, one coming out. So this is a peritectic in which liquid plus A is in equilibrium with A2B plus C. Now we have four phases present. The new phase is C and I use my trapezium to represent the coexisting phases. Liquid, that's at this point, A to B and A, and now down at the bottom C. Now we need to figure out what's consumed. It could be liquid and we'd be finished, or it could be A. We look at where the overall composition lies with respect to the subtriangles in that trapezium, we see it lies within the A, A to B, C subtriangle. And so in this case, the liquid is consumed. And so our final product is A plus A to B plus C, and there's no need to take the liquid any further. And we're done. And this is our final solid state equilibrium. Let's take the same phase diagram but look at a different composition. In this case, I've selected composition Y. First thing, identify the primary phase fields. We did that before. There they are shown in red. So next, let's look at the final product, the solid state compatibilities. It lies within the A to B plus B plus C sub triangle. So that's my final phase assemblage. How do I get there? Primary phase, Again, A, so the liquid is going to follow a straight line away from A, shown here. The liquid will reach the valley, and at that point, three phases coexist. A plus A to B plus my liquid. So let's use a tie triangle. This triangle shows the situation when the liquid has first reached that valley. Now the liquid will move down towards this invariant reaction. Let's add a new tie triangle just to show that there is liquid still remaining before I reach the invariant, and indeed I will undergo that four-phase equilibrium reaction. Here it is. Liquid, A to B, A, yes, Y is within the triangle. I'm going to have to undergo the invariant reaction. Now I'll undergo the reaction. I'll use a trapezium. C, A to B and A, as we had before. But notice now my overall composition lies within the A to B, C liquid subtriangle. So what phase is going to be consumed? A. So now we know solidification is not complete, as I have three remaining phases. A to B, C, and liquid. So I've replaced my trapezium by my new tie triangle that shows that three-phase coexistence. As we keep cooling, the liquid will now move down this valley. It will follow the valley for that liquid A to B plus C reaction. And so we're going to come down here towards the next invariant reaction. Just as the liquid arrives at this point, let's draw a new tie triangle to show the three-phase coexistence. Liquid, A to B and C. Where's my overall composition? Here, still within the triangle. So all three phases are present. There's still liquid left. I'm going to reach this next invariant reaction. 
which if we remember from before was a ternary U tactic. And if we didn't remember from before, we can just look at the arrows going into this one. It's clearly a ternary U tactic. And so now I'm going to start to form B. I'll replace my tie triangle by this four phase construct showing the four phases coexisting. A to B, my new phase B and C, and the liquid inside the triangle. And the hatched lines showing that all four phases are coexisting. There's only one thing to consume at a ternary eutectic, and that is the liquid. And so the liquid will be consumed, and that will be my final solid state equilibrium, A2B plus B plus C. So in this case, the liquid followed a more complicated path. Initially, with primary phase A, it rolled over that liquid a surface to the first peritectic valley. It came down that valley, underwent the ternary peritectic reaction. Liquid still remained, so the rest of the liquid progressed down in temperature to the ternary eutectic, and then the liquid was consumed. Okay, I think we've gone through enough material well, now we can have a go at this one. The MGO SIO2 AL203 ternary system. There's a lot of information on this diagram. A lot of different primary phase fields. A lot of quantification of liquidus isotherms. It looks very intimidating at first, but in our next video, we'll go through a series of crystallization paths in this system. And after that, I think you'll be equipped to tackle anything.